Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at another DDR5-8000 setup. Um, again with Ryzen, um, and, and we'll just uh, like we'll just get into the system specs right from the start. So, the CPU is a Ryzen 9 7950X. I purchased that, so big thank you to the channel supporters for making purchases like that possible. The motherboard I'm using is a Gigabyte B650E Aorus Tachyon, which was provided by Gigabyte, so big thank you to Gigabyte for the board. And the memory kit I'm using is a Core Center Vengeance RGB... Uh, 2x24 gig 6000 CL30 kit with, uh, well, 6000 CL30 at 1.4 volts, and that's the XMP on that memory kit. And, of course, the memory chips that this memory kit uses are Hynix 24 gigabit MDI. Um, and, and yeah, and I have them uh, set up to DDR5-8000, uh, as you can see here in Zen Timings. MCLK is at 4000 megahertz, speed 8000 megatransfers per second. Now, uh, I am not really thrilled about the hardware that I have to use to get this to work. Um, mainly the B650E Aorus Tachyon, because the B650E Aorus Tachyon was a very limited production motherboard that never really saw a proper retail release. I think Gigabyte sold some of them in the Asia region, but otherwise, it like, this board never was really available in stores. Um, and I think they made maybe, like, a few hundred, if a thousand of them. Um, which is quite frustrating because this is, at least as far as memory overclocking goes, the best board Gigabyte makes. Uh, it's also the best memory overclocking board I own, uh, because I basically don't have a gene. I think that's the main issue. Or any AM5 ITX boards. Um, and the, the reason, like, I'm doing this video is, like, well, so, the thing is, when I requested the, the, uh, review, like, the memory kit review sample from Corsair, um, my intention from the very get-go was, like, I want to, you know, run a 24, like, a normal spec 24 gigabit Hynix MDI kit at DDR5-8000. Because there are, like, you can buy memory kits that are rated for 8000 out of the box, uh, that basically won't work on most motherboards, so <laughs> good luck with that. Or you can buy a 6000 rated kit, and that also won't do 8000 on most motherboards, so... Again, good luck with that. But the point to me was mainly that, like, uh, so with 16 gigabit ADI, I think there might be a bit more variance, but with 24 gigabit ADI, as far as I know, it is very consistently capable of doing DDR5-8000, assuming that your CPU and motherboard are capable of keeping up. Which is why I ended up with the Tachyon, because basically on any other motherboard, the motherboard is the problem. Uh, I tried the X670 EA Aorus Extreme, that board, 7600 is very easy, 7800 is a pain, and 8000 is impossible to stabilize, at least as far as I can tell. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I've never successfully got an 8000 to... I, I don't think it even runs Y-Cruncher uh, for like two hours at 8000. So, um, yeah, I have had absolutely no success getting DDR5-8000 to work on the X670 EA or S Extreme. I also tried the B650 Live Mixer, uh, that board, like, th the thing is, those, like, the Extreme boots 8000, the Live Mixer boots 8000, it's just not stable. Uh, I also tried the B650 HDV, which is a one dim per channel, but it's on, like, a 6 lar PCB, and that, uh, really struggles even to do 7800. Uh, in fact, I think my, like, from, from my, like, I haven't, you know, done like really hard testing on this but as far as i can tell i think my live mixer is actually better than my hdv in terms of memory overclocking um but uh yeah and so um i also tried like uh, and admittedly i gave these the least effort but i did briefly try doing like 7600 on the x670e pro art board that i have and at 7600 that board is horribly unstable so that got sort of filtered out of the two to one mode testing very quickly because if 7600 barely functions there's no chance of 8000 ever working as far as i'm concerned unless that board has like the termination set completely wrong on auto which takes forever to fix so um yeah but basically i have like one board that can do ddr5 8000 and that board is this and also i did briefly uh, consider trying to do DDR5-8000 with, like, Intel CPUs, but we all know how, how that goes for me, so I'm just not doing that. That's, that, that, like, it, that doesn't work, I, and I have, I'm not wasting any more time on trying to make it work. So, yeah, B650 EA or Tachyon, 
As far as I know, a gene should be able to do similar things to the tachyon, I just don't have a gene. There might also be some ITX boards that are comparable. I don't have any AM5 ITX boards, so, um, actually, yeah, I don't have any AM5 ITX boards, so, again, I, I can't test what I don't have, so, um, yeah. Anyway, um, I guess let's, let's take a look at the, uh, settings, because we, we've gone over the caveats of, of the mo motherboard at this point. Like, I really wish there were, like, re you know... I, I wish I had a retail motherboard that I could have done this with, but I don't. Every motherboard that I have that has, a, like, a retail presence, I can't get this to work. So, um, that's kind of that. Anyway, um, let's take a look at the settings that I ended up with here and, like, the stress tests that I ran. So, obviously, uh, over two hours of Y-Cruncher and then, like, uh, 28... Wait, no, that's not 28. That's 38 hours of Carhu. Because this this is the thing, is, like, once it's stable, you, you should be able to run the stress test indefinitely, right? So, like, I started the stress test yesterday and it's just been running until I got around to shooting the video. I did... It, yeah, some, I started the stress test sometime yesterday. Anyway... Um, uh, you can see also I have a fan on the memory sticks, um, which I don't actually think is in necessarily for the DDR5-8000 itself. It's more for the refresh interval, because obviously I have that maxed out. Um, like, you'd be better off running, like, DDR5... Well, actually, would you? Nah, I'm pretty sure you'd be better off running DDR5, like, 6200 with maxed refresh interval than, like, 8000 with bad refresh interval. So... Um, yeah, the, the refresh interval is not optional. Um, you want that maxed out basically all of the time. Um, but yeah, so you can see I have a fan on the memory sticks, though it's not going very fast, so the memory sticks are still getting up to like, you know, 44 degrees, uh, 44. And interestingly enough, the temperature didn't manage to bug out for, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that 47.8 has actually bugged out, but it like didn't bug out to like 63.8, right? Which is kind of interesting, because usually it goes all the way up to like 63.8 on one of the dims, but, um... Yeah, as for the ambient air temperature, that's been around 20 degrees Celsius, right? This is on an open air test bench, so obviously if you were going to try something similar to this inside a case with a gene, because you can't buy one of these boards, man, it's really, like, why, why is it that, like, Gigabyte makes one good motherboard and that's the one they don't sell? <laughs> like, to be fair, the other motherboards they make are fine, and actually their four dimmers are surprisingly strong, but, like, the, they don't sell the best one. I, I don't get it. Like, why... And, and I will point out, actually, I don't... I'm, I'm not a fan of a lot of the, like, secondary feature options... Like, secondary features on the B650 Tachyon. Like, I, like the way the PCIe slots are laid out and stuff, I'm, I'm not a fan of. But from a me purely memory overclocking perspective... This is literally the best board Gigabyte makes, and they, they refuse to sell it, which is just like, why? <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, um, you know, keeping the dims under 50 degrees Celsius, basically, or under like, nah, I'm pretty sure I saw them hit 45 at some point, as like the room temperature fluctuates throughout the day, right? Uh, I don't have AC, so... Um, yeah, but uh, they, they haven't gone over, like, 47 degrees. Um, so we'll just say they, they've been under, like, 48 degrees Celsius the entire time. Um, Y-Cruncher obviously passed. Um, I was actually kind of more concerned about Y-Cruncher passing than, than Carhu um, on the... Yeah, with, with the Tachyon, because the last time I tried DDR5-8000 on this board, and admittedly that was with the 7900X, and the 7950X seems to have a slightly better memory controller than that CPU. Um, but with the 7900X, Y-Cruncher was the, the, the thing that was kind of a problem, and Carhu was completely fine. Um, but yeah, so everything is very laggy, because all of the RAM is being occupied by uh, Carhu route right now, so that's kind of annoying. Let's, let's just stop the test, and at this point I've committed to the take, but... Um, yeah. Um, so, this is as stable as anything it the timings aren't quite as dialed in as some of the other uh memory overclocks i've shown because i did get like i did get kind of desperate to get this to work because uh like i went through a bunch of boards like again when i got this you know 6000 cl 30 memory kit from corsair the intention from the very beginning for me 
was I want to do like, well, ideally DDR5-8000 on a 6000 rated kit because it's 24 gigabit MDI. And as far as I know, it like basically any 24 gigabit MDI memory should be able to do 8000, assuming the CPU and motherboard are up to the task. Um, which is why I went through so many motherboards. And so, yeah, after uh, after going through that many boards with the Tachyon, um, like, the, the funny thing is, um, when I first switched to the Tachyon, I thought, oh, I'll just update to the latest BIOS version, uh, which I think is, like, F22 or something. Um, and uh, F22 does, like, on auto settings, does not do DDR5-8000. Like, it's extremely unstable. I think it's something to do with the termination settings on the newer BIOSes, because they seem to be defaulting to... Well, the, the, it, the default terminations on the newer BIOSes are... Uh, different from what the BIOS I'm using here right now is uh, loading up, but I haven't gone around like I haven't gotten around to like going on to the newer BIOSes and using the terminations off of this BIOS version because the terminations really should be tied to the motherboard topology rather than what like AGSA you're running unless the unless there's some like deeper memory like memory controller configuration that affects the uh, signaling integrity. Um, before, like as like a separate variable from the termination settings. But my understanding is that termination really should be almost entirely dependent on the motherboard memory topology, maybe slightly affected affected by voltages, um, and, and shouldn't really, like, the BIOSes shouldn't really change the termination requirements significantly. But anyway, I haven't gotten around to testing that. What I do know is that uh, the F8 BIOS... Um, DDR5-8000 works, whereas on, like, F22, and I think I also tried F21, uh, yeah, those don't work. Um, like, it, it didn't work automatically, and I haven't got, try, got, um, haven't tried fixing that, so I went through, like, three, like, this is the third BIOS that, that I tried to get DDR5-8000 to work, and so, yeah, by the time I finally got this to work, I was pretty desperate, so I didn't tighten, uh, especially I think the primaries might be a little bit unnecessarily loose, um, but uh, it does work. Also, at DDR5-8000 with Ryzen, you have one sort of fun upside, which is that your FCLK and your UCLK can actually get synchronized. Well, technically you can also synchronize at like 7200, and on some motherboards you can also synchronize 7600 and 7800, but on most motherboards the uh, FCLK ratios that you need for synchronization at 7600 and 7800, they don't work, because like you need a 1900 ratio or a 1950 ratio, and for whatever reason, on the vast majority of motherboards, neither of those two ratios is, like, functional. Um, so on most motherboards, you're basically stuck with, like, FC, like FCLK1800 synchronizes with DDR5-7200. But FCLK1800 is really, really, really slow because it's, like, 1800 FCLK. And, and Ryzen is incredibly memory bottlenecked just because the Infinity fabric is so freaking slow. Um, it's not very wide. Um, is basically the issue relative to the clock that it's running at. Um, and so with Ryzen, when you're in 2 to 1 mode, basically you really kind of have to run something like 8000 to justify being in 2 to 1 mode so that you get that synchronized Infinity Fabric and uh, memory controller. Um, and this gives you a slight latency advantage. Um, so this is actually... Uh, like faster than say like 6200 with 2200 FCLK or something. The flip side to that is this also doesn't work on basically any motherboards. Funnily enough, uh, a lot of the AM5 motherboard QVLs uh, will claim support for DDR5-8000. My experience is that those QVLs are made of lies. DDR5-8000 works on very few motherboards. Um, like, and, and like, um, from the boards I have, the only one where it works is the Tachyon, so... Yeah, anyway, so th this this is just kind of a pain um, to set up. Well, actually, if you have a Tachyon and you're on the right BIOS version, it actually kind of just works on its own for the most part. Um, if you don't have a Tachyon and you're you're just kind of screwed as far as I can tell. Because, um, yeah, I, I've not been able to get 8000 um, stable on any other motherboard. Uh, even though, like, a bunch of the motherboards I tried, the QVL says that, hey, DDR5-8000 is supported, I, I think the motherboard manufacturers are just being 
very generous with their QVLs. Um, anyway, um, I guess we should just go into the BIOS at this point to look at the settings. But yeah, like the runtime on the stress test is like, you know, freaking 28, what, 38 hours of Carhu and over two hours of Y Cruncher. Um, but with the 17900X, Y Cruncher was, uh, well, yeah, with the 17900X and a different kit of memory, memory, the Y Cruncher was the test that was actually like a problem to stabilize, the VT3 test. Because I originally tested with VST and VST was fine, and then I tried VT3 and VT3 was like immediately upset. Um, so yeah, but th this is running VT3 just fine. So anyway, let's go into the BIOS and take a look at the settings. Um, I kind of, I really wish I had more boards to try this with that like actually have a chance of working. Unfortunately, motherboard manufacturers, actually, the, the thing is motherboard manufacturers basically make motherboards based on like uh, sales data, which is why like RGB is absolutely bloody everywhere because RGB sells motherboards. That's also why like all motherboards are advertised as being gaming motherboards because putting the word gaming increases sales. Um, so... Yeah, also, I'm pretty sure the reason Gigabyte has Aorus as a sub-brand is, so is that Aorus starts with an A, so it shows up higher in, like, alphabetical product listings. <laughs> that's a theory, but I, I think that's why they went with Aorus, because it's just, like, a random nonsense word. Anyway, um, let's take a look at the settings here. So, uh, as you can see, I don't have XMP enabled, because... It's not going to do anything for us when the XMP profile is freaking 6000 CL30. Uh, I Let's just quickly check the memory controller configurations, because I can't remember if I actually ended up... Oh yeah, so I did manually uh, configure this. Um, so we have the DFE turned on, um, which is... I'm, I like... I. So it's DFE stands for Decision Feedback Equalization. I've tried reading some of the, like, explanations of what this does. I'm too stupid to understand it. Um, but the idea, like, my, my idiot, like, I can't explain how it works, but my idiot understanding of it is basically it's some fancy circuitry somewhere in the memory controller that, like, removes interference caused by previous signals being sent. So, like, when you have, like, a, like, like, you get different distortions in your signals based on if you have, like, a 1 to 0 transition or if it's, like, like if you send 1, 0, 1, 0, that'll have, like, some different distortion to it than, like, a 1, 1, 1 or a 0, 0, 1, 1. And so the memory controller can kind of, like, learn what that distortion looks like and then, like, remove it or something. I, yeah, that, I, I, I don't actually get how decision feedback equalization works. But basically, memory controller does electronic magic to, like, read data reliably at very high speeds. Um, that, that's, like, the explanation for it. Anyway, um... So then we have things like the taps, which is like, I think, how many times it... I can't explain. Anyway, four taps uh, seems to work best. We'll, we'll just go with that. Um, then I do have the runtime training reduction turned on, because um, I haven't found... Like, if you disable this, this will make your training memory training take for absolutely forever. And at least with the Tachyon, I haven't found that to make a difference in terms of stability. On the other motherboards, uh, I mean, I never got 8,000 to work on the other motherboards, and I, I did try turning this off, and so evidently that doesn't help. Um, or at least that didn't make any difference. I didn't adjust the burst lengths, because this is what, like, the memory controller uses for figuring out, like, thing, like, like, training. Uh, like, these are test patterns, and how many test patterns it, you know, like, tries to write and read from the memory to see if the the memory is, like, proper, if the... Well, I think there's actually calibration that happens on both the memory and the memory controller side, but basically that's like the um, how mi how much test data does the memory controller uh, use to figure out operating parameters? And I've just left that on auto because there, well, no reason to adjust it in my opinion, especially since I turned on the runtime reduction. 
Um, but if you disable the runtime reduction and set this to like eight, the memory con memory training takes forever because um, the memory controller will be using eight times more training data. I don't, or like eight times more training uh, like patterns. Um, they're not. I don't think they're different patterns. It's just like more, um, right? Um, anyway, I have that on auto. I don't know what auto defaults to. I'm gonna assume it uses just one um, burst length. Inst um, but anyway. And then for training options for the, uh, what is it, received DFE? Okay, so this is just on, well, I'm pretty sure that's enabled right now, if it's on auto, because I have the DFE read training turned on. Um, yeah, as for the voltage step size and delay step size, this is like, um, well, at zero, the memory controller is checking more configurations of the uh, DFE magic. We'll just call, yeah, we'll just go with DFE magic. So if you like increase this, um, from zero to say one, the memory controller actually like checks fewer possible configurations. I am not sure if there's any upside to that. It, it should reduce the training time, but I think it trades stability for like boot speed. Um, so yeah, for, for DDR5-8000, I've always just been using it at zero because that makes the memory controller check the most different configurations, then delay step size is like more DFE configuration magic. And again, we want the memory, like at least within my idiot understanding, I want the memory controller to check as many configurations as possible, right? Because, um, yeah. I, I think these are really just like, you can make it speed up and speed up the training and, and like lose stability for increasing any of these, I think. Um, is my understanding. I really wish I could, like, like, I've tried reading documentation about, like, what, or, like, application notes of what decision feedback equalization is and how it works, but there's, like, very complicated math involved, and I'm dumb. <laughs> so, that's not happening. Um, or, I mean, like, I, like, you know, I, I, I can try read it. I don't understand it, so... Yeah, anyway, and then DFE taps, uh, again, maxed out. Um, I haven't tried any other configurations. This is, like, honestly, I if I'm reading how this and understanding how DFE works correctly, this configuration that I'm using here is basically a, like, brute force do-everything approach. Um, but it does seem to work, so I don't see any reason to, to not do it this way. Uh, what's interesting to me is on uh, I, some motherboards, I've noticed that they'll default to like two taps with a two for the voltage step size, which uh, I know actually, funnily enough, and this doesn't apply to this board, but on the HDV, the B650 HDV, um, that's the default configuration for the uh, DFE, and that's actually not good for stability. Like, on the HDV, I got significantly better stability at 7800, but with four tap, uh, like like four tap DFE, and uh, Mac, like minimum voltage step size. Funnily enough, um, with this configuration of like four zero zero zero, like and then like minimum voltage, minimum voltage and minimum delay step sizes, and four tap DFE on everything. Um, so. That improved stability at 7800 on the HDV, uh, it makes DDR5-8000 completely unbootable. Um, which is really interesting, because the default configuration from the motherboard does boot DDR5-8000. It's just not stable, like, at all. So, um, yeah. Um, also, the default configuration on that motherboard isn't very stable even at 7800, so... Uh, yeah, that that might need more testing, though I don't think I'm going to be doing that with... Do I want to do more testing on that? The thing is, like, unless... If you're in 2 to 1 mode, unless you can get, get 8,000 to work, um, it's kind of not worth it. You're better off just running, like, 6,200 most of the time instead. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, if you do have a board um, that's, like, a Gene or a Tachyon, which you don't have a Tachyon, but let's say you have a Gene... Uh, and you're trying to, like, improve the memory training uh, for, like, the sake of stability, I would try, like, just maxing out all of the DFE settings. Um, 
You might even want to, like, try disabling the runtime reduction, potentially. Um, though that will make the memory training take for absolutely forever, like, four minutes, uh, or longer if you also, like, crank up the burst length, right? Um, but I think if you just turn off the reduction, you, you get, like, a four-minute training time. If you also increase the burst length, like, it's gonna get way, way longer. Um, anyway, so that's the memory controller, like, training settings, um, that I'm using. I, I wish I had a better explanation of why, but DFE is, like, goes right over my head. So, here we are. Anyway, uh, memory multiplier is at 80, infinity fabric frequency is at 2000 megahertz, so it synchronizes with our 2000 megahertz memory controller, because the memory controller is running at half the clock of the memory, and the memory is running at 4 gigahertz, so the memory controller is at 2 gigahertz, so the infinity fabric to synchronize we want also at 2 gigahertz. Um, and this is like the optimal sort of general purpose setup for DDR5-8000 with Ryzen. Funnily enough, if you have workloads that are extremely bandwidth limited, uh, 2200 FCLK can actually be faster, but only for those workloads. And honestly, the only workload I've seen where that's actually the case is Y-Cruncher. Like, Y-Cruncher runs better with 2200 Infinity Fabric than with 2000 Infinity Fabric. Literally everything else, you're better off having the Infinity Fabric synchronized to the synchronized to the memory controller. Um, so, yeah. Uh, except synthetic memory bandwidth tests like IDA, for example. Um, anyway, uh, SOC voltage is at 1.15. Uh, this isn't minimized, but I just like, like, the, in 2 to 1 mode, because the memory controller clock is so low, you don't need a lot of SOC voltage. And low SOC voltage also helps with, like, high infinity fabric stability, though that's not really a concern at 2000 uh, megahertz on the infinity fabric. But yeah, 1.15 is just the SOC voltage I've been using for 2 to 1 mode most of the time, because the, the last time I got DDR5-8000 to work, it was with 1.15 SOC. So, yeah, I've just kind of stuck to that as, like, a good starting point. It's definitely not, like, dangerously high for the memory controller, um, and potentially lowering it at some point is going to actually, like, stop posting, and I'm not really interested to figure out where exactly that happens. Um, so... Yeah, anyway, VDDIO mem and VDDQ, I have both at 1.35. This is the same as the last time I did a DDR5-8000 setup with this motherboard. Uh, these are specific to the motherboard. Um, on the B650 HDV, the ASRock board, uh, I was actually more successful with, like, getting stability at 7800 with, like, 1.45 VDDIO. Um, so, yeah, um... Though that board also uses like different terminations and stuff, so you know. But the IO volt, like VDD IO and VDDQ, are very motherboard specific, uh, and they can also vary by BIOS uh, and memory configuration. I think for dual rank, I was actually running lower IO and VDDQ, but that was in one to one mode, not two to one mode. So anyway, um, yeah. So that's the uh, VDD, like, like this is optimal VDDIO and VDDQ for this motherboard um, with a DDR5-8000 setup. If you have something like a Gene, you might find that you actually need significantly more voltage or less voltage. It just, it, it depends on the board and BIOS version to some extent. Uh, then the VDD voltage is at 1.43 because unfortunately, as awesome as the F8 BIOS is uh, for running DDR5-8000, uh, it doesn't have working high voltage mode, so uh, I can't set any, like, if I try to set the voltage above 1.43 volts, the board will not be able to post, um, which is quite annoying. Um, then VPP is on auto because that doesn't really do anything uh, for stability. VDDP, I'm at 1.05. VDDP uh, varies by motherboard. Some motherboards need it really high, some motherboards need it pretty low. The Tachyon is a motherboard that needs it pretty low. Uh, it also varies by CPU. Uh, and you, my experience with VDDP is that if you don't have it set quite right, a lot of the time that'll cause Y-Cruncher to crash. Um, so, yeah, and with the 7900X I was using 1.035 VDDP, whereas with this 7950X I'm using 1.05. I didn't try other VDDP values with the 7950X, because this, like, after my experiences with the 7900X on this board, I already just went with, like, a low voltage to start with, and that already worked. Um, I am toying with the idea of maybe trying to push this memory kit even a little higher, say 80, 
8160 or like 8240, right? So 102 or 103 BCLK. And in that case, I'll probably need to fiddle with the VDDP voltage some more because I don't think it's very likely that I just randomly punched in the exact optimal VDDP voltage for the CPU. Though it's not impossible. It might be that the CPU actually likes 1.05 best, but it's not like I tested a range of volta like voltages to see uh, if, if that's actually the case. There's also a chance that the memory controller on the CPU is so good that 1.0, like, that at DDR5-8000, there's actually quite a range of values, and so if I push the speed further, that range is gonna, like, narrow down to, like, one very specific voltage. Um, but I haven't, you know, tried pushing above 8000 yet, because just getting to 8000, uh, was kind of a chore. Not, on, not specifically on this motherboard, but, you know, like, I went through, like, three, four boards before ending up at this one, so, yeah. Anyway, VDDG is just on auto, um, which I'm pretty sure by default this board loads either 850 or, like, 950, um, both of which are perfectly fine, so, yeah, and I'm, I'm just gonna, so I don't see any reason to, to fiddle with that, especially also since we're running, like, 2000 FCLK, so it's just not a concern, um, because the VDDG voltages are for the Infinity Fabric. Anyway, uh, now we get to the memory settings. I do have power down enabled just so that memory context restore can be enabled. So, you know, we don't have to wait forever for it to post. Though, considering that I have the runtime training reduction turned on, uh, if I turned off memory context restore as well as power down mode, uh, it wouldn't actually take that much longer to post. Like, it would still take a while, but it wouldn't be for absolutely forever. Whereas if the runtime training reduction was turned off, it's like four minutes before the system boots up. Um, anyway, and that's four minutes at any speed. Not even specifically at DDR5-8000. It just, like, the, the you basically tell the memory controller to, mem like, spend forever memory training. So it does. Um... Anyway, timings, uh, cast latency at 38. I did try 36 as well with like TRCD 48, and that was erroring out in Carhu, if I remember correctly. I think it's because the voltage is actually a bit too low. Um, and instead of like, well, I can't raise the VDD voltage anymore because the high voltage mode is broken on this BIOS. Um, but instead of trying to figure out if, like, like I'm pretty sure TRCD48 would probably work. There's also a chance, like, TRP44 or 42 might also work. But, like I said, um, I just wanted this to work at all. And so I went with, like, what I would consider kind of fail-safe primary timings, where it's, like, 38, 50, 46 is, like... I, I think the chance of this not working is very, very low. Um, so... Yeah, that that's why I went with these timings. They're I, they're I'm I'm pretty sure there's headroom in TRCD and TRP. Uh, TCL might actually be minimized because again, when I tried 36, uh, that was not stable. But it might have also been that I was running the TRP too low at at the time for the voltage that we're at. Anyway, TRAS is at 40 mostly because TRC is at 86. Um, the way, like, I approach TRAS is basically, I, I decide on a TRC value, and then I set the TRAS to match that, basically. Um, and in this case, uh, I, like, we're at DDR5-8000, so honestly, I'd be kind of surprised if, like, TRC-80 wouldn't work, because, like, at 6200, these dim dims can run a TRC of 62 just fine. But, uh, there, like, I guess maybe at 8000, there's some extra, like, stability concerns, so... Yeah, like, I consider TRC to basically be a primary timing, so I didn't really spend that much time. Like, I think there's headroom in TRC. Um, maybe not a lot, but I think there's still some headroom in it, because I, yeah, like, I, I didn't really want to spend, f like, forever on this memory overclock just to get the t primary timings, like, a couple ticks tighter. Um, anyway, TWR is at 48, which is the register limit. TREFI is completely maxed out. So TRFC is at 777. Uh, this could go lower, but I don't think it's going to go lower than like 700-ish, something like that. Um, so yeah, because 24 gigabit MDI just generally doesn't do very low TRFC, and at 8000, the TRFC needs to be proportionally higher to match the higher memory speed. Um, RTP at 16, uh, there might be headroom in that. Maybe? I don't think so. Um, 
I'm not sure. RTP on 24 gigabit MDI tends to be a bit looser than on 16 gigabit ADI, but um, I think that might be minimized. Anyway, TRDL at 12, TRDS at 8. Uh, like, TRDS and L on 24 gigabit MDI just, in my experience, do not go as low as 16 gigabit ADI. Um, so, yeah, these, these I do actually consider pretty close to minimized. Like, there's maybe a chance that, like, 10 might work, but I, I kind of doubt it. Um, TFAW at 32, because there's no point setting it below 32 when the TRDS is at 8. WTRL at 20, which is actually quite low. I usually use a much looser T WTRL than this, but, uh, yeah, that works just fine. WTRS at 4, um, might still have some headroom, TRDSCL at 9, I'm pretty sure 8 would have probably worked, but again, I really don't feel like, like, th this is enough of a pain to set up without every timing being absolutely minimized, so, um, yeah, then write to write SCL at 7, um, because writes usually go somewhat below read to read, um, but I didn't try minimizing that. So there's probably headroom in, in write to write. And then uh, WRD and RDWR are at 6 and 22. These definitely have some headroom in them. Not a ton, but I'm pretty sure they could go a bit lower. Um, and then for the data bus configuration, that's all on auto. Um, the F8 BIOS actually does a perfectly good job of those. Though I'm pretty sure, like I mentioned at the start of the video, I think that's like the biggest difference between F8 and like F22 or actually if we go to BIOS flash, uh, well, we're just going to take a wait. Oh, the USB stick's not plugged in. Okay, well, we're not going to take a look at that. Um, but yeah, so I tried F22 and F21 and like a few different BIOSes like that. And they didn't work. And I'm pretty sure the reason they didn't work for DDR5-8000 is because they were defaulting to the following configuration for the terminations. And, uh, well, if, like, on this BIOS, right, what it's loading is, like, 40, 40, 48, if I remember correctly. If 40, 48 works, uh... On one BIOS version, it doesn't make sense that, like, 60, 60, 60 would work on a different one, unless, like, something drastically changed in the memory controller configuration, which I don't think it has. Um, so, probably one thing I want to test is, like, honestly, I'd like to, like to try a setup with the high voltage mode actually working, right? Because that's been quite frustrating, that high voltage mode is just, like, it's just broken on this BIOS version, and... Uh, if we could run this at higher voltage, I could get the, like, cast latency down. Um, like, at, say, 1.6 volts, I think TCL34 is probably pretty likely to work, and we might be able to do, like, 46 TRCD or something. Um, but, uh, uh, where was I going with this? Um, yeah, so, like, I... I'm actually not sure if the newer BIOSes have working high voltage mode, but that is something that I want to, like, look into, because, uh, yeah, if they do have a working high voltage mode, then, like, trying the termination settings from this BIOS on the newer BIOSes, and hopefully that fixes the stability, and then I can try some, like, tighter primary timings. Not that it's going to drastically improve the performance, but, you know, 8000 CL34 just sounds cooler than 8000 CL38. Um, and, uh... Did I change anything? I don't actually want to save. What? Isn't there like a, just an exit? Yeah, there. Because um, I just want to quickly uh, take a look at the, the terminations again. Yeah, and so board boots really quickly because we have the memory context restore turned on right now. Windows doesn't, for whatever reason. I just quickly want to check the Zen timings readout, because I think it's 4048. Which, I, the, the terminations are very much motherboard specific. Um, 
the newer BIOSes for, say, the ASRock B650HDV actually work better than the older BIOSes in terms of memory stability. And, like, the HDV also uses, like, 60, 60, 60, and even PROC ODT 60. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't say, like, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to copy Buildzoid's termination settings off of a 1 DIMM per channel 10-layer PCB motherboard and they're going to work on my... Uh, eight layer or six layer daisy chain uh they probably won't but you're free to try <laughs> but I, I would kind of doubt that they'll work um yeah and it's 4048 on this bios version so on the newer bioses it was loading like 60 60 60 and that like literally couldn't even get two minutes of carhu out of that so i think that was probably like that's my current theory as to why that happens on the newer bioses i just haven't gotten around to testing that and i the issue is, is like, what's, the, like, this This is one issue I have with using a board like the Tachyon, is like, okay, let's say I fix DDR, like, let's say I get DDR5-8000 to work on the newer BIOSes, what's the point when nobody can actually buy this motherboard? Um, and unfortunately, like, I've tried messing with the terminations on some of the other boards, like, say, the X670A Aorus Extreme, which you can actually buy, but that does, like, it didn't really help. <laughs> Like it, like seventy. It may, like it fixed the stability at seventy eight hundred, but like seventy eight hundred isn't really very comp. Like you're better off, right? Like, like seventy eight hundred doesn't have that like synchronized infinity fabric advantage that DDR five eight thousand does. At least not on the Aorus Extreme, because I couldn't find a way to get the nineteen hundred FCLK ratio to work. Um. So. Yeah, like. I don't know if there's much point in, like, checking if the newer BIOSes for this board um, fix DD... Like, if I can fix the DDR5-8000 support on those BIOSes, because it's, like... Like, that's good for me, I guess, because I have this board. But I don't... Like, I don't daily this board, right? Because, again, I'm not a big fan of the I.O. configuration on this motherboard. Um... Like, the, the primary PCIe slot is way too far down the board, so it blocks the, like, secondary if you have a big GPU, which I do, because I have a 4070 Ti, which is freaking massive, because of course it is. Um, so, yeah, but hopefully this was somewhat interesting. And, and the main reason I decided, like, ultimately did decide to go, go with this is, like, I wanted to show, like, what even a, like, 6000 CL30 kit can do when you're not bottlenecked by your motherboard and your CPU, and actually that's kind of it. I guess the BIOS, you, you could say the BIOS, like the newer BIOSes that don't work at 8000 for me on, on this board, like you could argue that they're also a bottleneck, but like, yeah, if you're not limited by your motherboard BIOS and, and CPU, then like even a 6000 CL30 kit can do DDR5-8000. Because the problem with DDR5-8000 isn't really the memory kits, it's the boards, it's the CPUs, it's literally everything else. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, yeah. Well, hopefully you found this interesting, because I don't think it's particularly useful. And, uh, yeah, that's it for the video. So, big thank you to Corsair and Gigabyte for the motherboard and the memory kit. Uh, thank you to the support, like, channel supporters for the 7950X. And that's it for the video. So, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There is a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up uh, shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a Bandcamp. There's a link to that, to all of that in the description. It would be much appreciated if you check that out. And that's it. So, thanks for watching and goodbye.